Hello everybody and thank you for coming back and welcome to this chapter about the RC equipment that I'm using on the Spitfire Guillo's RC conversion. Um, I received a question on the channel about what are the specific RC components that I'm using so I will put a list and I'll try also to put some links down in the description. But uh, before I go in depth into each of them, basically what I'm using for the Spitfire conversion is spare parts of the P51 Mustang that you can get also online. Okay, so basically it's, it's a similar size and uh, as I got this one to learn how to fly and basically you can buy spare parts for pretty much any piece of this one and the uh, electronic spare parts are the ones that I'm, that I'm using. So, now detail one by one all the pieces that we have. The first one is the transmitter now this I believe is not compatible with any of the other standard uh, transmitters that, uh, that exist but uh, for my purposes I'm going to go on using this uh, as for, uh, for example now with this transmitter I can fly two airplanes already and if I make any other adaptations I actually have two others that are already completed that I can also in theory fly with, uh, with, the, same, with the same transmitter so that transmitter I believe it's not, uh, not compatible with any other ESC which is a pity but as I say, for the, the size and the purpose of what I'm using, it's, uh, it's good enough. Then, a key component is the ESC. Here we have a, a broken ESC with a, with a broken server. Uh, server. The, the ESC, the good thing it has is, first of all, it's small and it has both servers integrated, or two servers integrated. These two servers actually go to the tail surfaces. One will go to the to the stabilizer and one will go to the elevator. As curiosity also, it has to fly like this. It has to go kind of upside down, the servers pointing down. Same setup as on the P51, because it has also gyro stabilization, which is great because that's how somehow one manages to fly. There's this, uh, there's this lever on the transmitter that has the, the level of expert mid or beginner mode with more or less use of the, of the stabilization. So far, I do manage to fly the P51 on the expert mode, but on the on the Spitfire for sure, I'm still on the beginner mode. It gives more stabilization. This is a key component. I wouldn't say it's too expensive. I don't know exactly if it's expensive or not, but uh, but it does seem to work. Um, what one has to do is then also one has to connect the motor, has to do a bit of soldering and connect the motor in the in the right places. Um, and, uh, and basically build it in to the to the airplane here. You can't see it anymore. You might you'll see it on other videos. Maybe I'll open this up. It might help. Opa. Here you see this this server used to be built into this one, but uh, this ESC. But one of the servers burnt out, and it's built in in there with a space for with a cable to plug in the battery. So I put the battery in ahead, and then the two servos connected via rods to the. To the rear, to the rear tail surfaces, to the tail surface. Okay, so that's a, a key component that is of course, of course, needed. Um, maybe also in parallel, I mentioned also there's a battery, of course, that has to go in there. Um, when I bought the P51, it also came with a charger. So actually, you might also need a battery charger. I don't know how standard these are. But, uh, but they do work quite well. One has to be careful to plug it in the right way. And I believe one cell, if I can read it actually, the one cell 3.7 volts, 400, 400 milliamps uh, batteries, which last quite a long time. At least for my purposes, with a P51, I can be in the air easy 10 minutes, sometimes even 15 and, and longer. If you don't go full throttle, it lasts quite a, quite a bit. So that's also, so ESC and battery so far, I put them aside. Then an important component is also the gearbox, basically, and maybe I'll go on with the second one also, or the next one, which is also the electric motor. The motor actually goes in here and then you have then the gearbox. It's good because it gives also support to put the, the motor, uh, to, uh, let's say attach the motor to the fuselage. Let's see if I can open this one up. On the P51 it's inside, you can't open it up so easily, you have to cut it up. But on this one you can see. So I've used the gearbox kind of as the as the the, the gluing point for the for the motor to, to go on to. So so that's also important. Now that I see also there's this little component which is which goes onto the gearbox, which then I'll say attaches then the propeller. 
so the propeller will then attach on here so when you do the if you if you do go this way you have to do not only by the propeller but also you have to buy also the the propeller mount for it which comes also separately again i'll try to put it in the in the description down below so you you don't miss out on anything and you save on postage hopefully um, the motor it, it's often mentioned and i think even on the box it says it's a brushless motor it isn't it's brushed so it's not as powerful as the brushed ones uh, brushless ones it has two cables which is what gives it away and that is okay like uh, like at least for the power that is needed here it's more than enough um, I've still got the mosquito that I put two of these in so I managed to connect two in if they'd been brushed brushless motors it wouldn't have been possible they would have gone out of sync and probably not even worked so so from that perspective the small engine even if it's brushed um, I think gives enough enough power for the for these size models which is um, which is fine um, those are so that's uh, the gearbox and the motor then there's the propeller also that you can also buy online as I was showing it has you can even take it apart and, and change it uh, they're soft it's a prop saver structure typically this one falls off it's the first thing that falls off right so if it crashes or, or lands and hits down this will just pop off quite fast which is the, the whole purpose of it um, do they break I would say I have broken one but the others other than that like they do seem to be quite resistant this is already quite dirty as you see um, especially when I was using it without the landing gear this will come come on here and then it will it's typically the first thing that falls off and they do seem to be quite resistant I have to admit that uh, me not being the I can't take it off now me not being the best flyer uh, they, they do seem to be resistant now um, another important part is also the um, a little servo you have to watch out that it's it's got the three pins that then fit into into this plug of the ESC and uh, the ESC and if you do some research you'll find it it's good because if it doesn't have the servo installed then the two uh, the two servers will control the aileron and the elevator and it will be okay on the controller if you do have the the external servo installed it will control the the, the the external servo will control the ailerons one server will control the elevator and one will control the the rudder so it's it's got some intelligence put in there basically now i'm not sure i'm not an expert in electronic and the programming but it's it's thought quite well you could use the esc without ailerons and would still fly well with uh, with the same transmitter so not a bad thing to have altogether for the price, which I would say is fifteen to twenty dollars around that uh, that mark. Um, I don't think it's bad quality-wise. So far, I'm happy. Just burnt one out. I'm not sure if it was my fault or not. Hope not. Um, but yeah, but this is then the 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 little servo that has to go in. Um, here we can see the little servo mounted in. It's a bit of a different model, but this one fits mounted in sideways. It comes also with its uh, with a set of horns. Um, and on the Spitfire, I mounted it in, I think, like lengthwise, and uh, and it controls then the the ailerons. As uh, as part of the control of the ailerons and the surfaces, you could also buy the horns. Like I do have still a, a set of horns, to like aileron horns. These are the ones that I'm using here. You can use any horns. For example, here on the elevator and the rudder, I used another set of horns. On other models I've used, I've used some simple plastic, so you can you can figure it out. These are not expensive. These are maybe a bit more expensive, but uh, but you have to figure out what it is you you're willing to pay and and to use. And then of course, now that I have it here, it's also the control rods. These I'm using the the direct spares. You can also make them out of wire, like any any other control rod. But these you can also buy as the spares. Of all the control rods that uh, that the P51 has, right? So we have these rods, and also then these external the the, the rods that go to the to the rear part. So again, you can buy them online or bend them yourself, depend how much you you want to to invest in it. So that's basically all the parts. Now the the key the key criteria for choosing this first of all is cost. What I did first, I bought the P51 to see if I would like actually to fly with these things, um, and uh, and that came with the uh, with the transmitter. Even if it's let's say a, a lock transmitter to this kind of ESCs, it was the cheapest option to get into it with something that has actually already four channel control. So I do have the engine, elevator, rudder, and ailerons. So four channel control. 
um, for sure if you go into the sixth channel that would be better but uh, but to start this was good and then basically I build up on that it's cheap to buy then the the components you don't need to go and buy more and more of, uh, of, the, of the P51s they also have an F4U a Corsair and I think they also have a T28 Trojan which is which is also nice it's kind of on the on the bucket list someday but cost is then the first thing I'm still not committed to investing maybe as much as the whole model cost for a transmitter and a receiver and then that receiver will not be uh, gyro stabilized so I'll need to maybe also buy a stabilizer or be able to fly better and things like that so I'm still not there I'm still kind of at the beginning of this uh, so I'm still not fully committed to the hobby let's say so um, it might get to it um, of course the compatibility of the parts I just copied the same parts that they had because I know they work well um, yes, what about the propeller? Is the propeller size good and the pitch and things like that? I still struggle to calculate all that. I know that this works well on this model. It's like 60 grams altogether. So if I keep to around that weight, I think this one will be more. If I keep to around that weight uh, on any future models, even up to maybe double the size or double the weight, I think I'll still be able to use this setup. So I keep it there. And of course then the size. The ESC it fits very well in the P51 in the Spitfire. If, if you watch the videos, you you see it. It was not easy to fit in the the ESC into such such a a narrow fuselage, but it did quite fit. So for for that perspective, also the size is important. So so size compatibility and of course then the weight that it's somehow somehow matching. Okay, so this is the overview of the pieces of the of the components that I'm using for the RC conversions I'm doing maybe at some point I'll upgrade to to some higher model I'm considering it but I'm still not committed as I say um, hopefully it's useful I'll try to put the links down below to all the all the components that um, that uh, that I'm using here and uh, hopefully it will help you also with your own RC conversion it is it is fun a lot of work to build them and maybe then fly just for 19 seconds was one of my, my, my best flights uh, then, then indeed it did fly better and I believe this one will fly also much better so so uh, I do recommend it it's a it's a fun hobby and especially with the good weather coming up it's going to be it's going to be good so thank you everybody for watching drop me a note or a question if you want and I'll, I'll try to answer it and uh, I'll see you next time